looks. Looks like we're good. And um, we're on. Sweet. So welcome, everybody. Happy afternoon. At least afternoon here. <laughs> awesome. Hello, everybody. I mean, I think even Pacific time, it's the afternoon. If you're in the if you're in the States. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everyone is doing awesome this week. Uh, happy Wellness Wednesday. Uh, for those of you that are new to the group or don't know who we are yet, um, my name is Brittany Prince. I am the owner of Fresh and Fit Nutrition. I'm a holistic nutritionist. This is my awesome uh, partner here, Chris Porton. Introduce yourself, sir. Sure. My name is Chris Porton. Great to be here with Brittany. She is awesome. It's been a pleasure being uh, helping run the group with Brittany and connecting with so many people. Today, we're very, we, in the month of January, I apologize, just step back a second. In the month of January, we did three uh, awesome Facebook Lives about different aspects of gut health, immune health, uh, supporting detoxification processes, processes, just really all how, how it all works together. And we really uh, had a really good time doing that. This week, we're going to be talking about mental health and uh, touching into different aspects of it, both from the emotional aspect, aspect in addition to the food aspect. I've been, that's a fact, I've been experienced different uh, aspects of mental health, anxiety throughout my life. And incorporating different, uh, removing different foods and also incorporating more nutrient dense foods, healthy lifestyle practices, high quality supplementation. And one of the best things I've heard with regard to uh, supporting mental health, and this is something we all need, need now nowadays, is vitamin C connection. We all need our oranges and apples and peaches and pears and all the ascorbic acid stuff, which is really important that from God's green earth, but we all need each other. We're all sort of a certain aspect, uh, separated from each other. Uh, sometimes work remotely is cool. It's nice to be able to do that, but we all need each other to a certain aspect. Whether, whether it's just sending a message, sending a message to someone, hey, what's up? I'll be doing well. So the vitamin C connect is an important aspect of mental health that I really like to emphasize. And I'll step off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were absolutely correct, Chris. That connection, like you know, we were designed to be in communities like and that the last two years I think has made the you know the mental health crisis that much worse because we were so isolated um from our friends from our family from those that we loved and it's just it's not it's not how we were designed to live so you know that is a very very important uh part of mental health and we're going to talk about um all the other important parts of mental health as well um if you're here with us live, uh, say hello, give us a like, uh, drop hashtag live. We'll try to keep an eye on the chat um, during this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Um, and if you're on the replay, drop hashtag replay, say hi. And as always, you can uh, post questions there as well. And if you're on the replay, is that you? Yep, I just had to pop up a second. Okay. I had I had the chat up, so I wanted to see that, but now we're just okay. good. Perfect. All right. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get those cool. slides up. Let me just see how this is. I'm going to get into... Hold on, I want to get it where like only one of us is like on there while we're talking yeah. so that it makes it a little bit easier. No worries. All right. Okay. Cool. Here we are. So mental health, nutrition, and lifestyle. Um, we get a lot of questions here in the group. Um you know, anxiety, depression, um, supplements to take, things to do, um, all those type of things. So we thought, you know, especially with everything going on still and, you know, the last two years that this was an important topic for us to discuss. Um, so we have the gut brain connection. Um, the gut and the brain work in a bi-directional manner, meaning um, digestive health can impact mental health and vice versa. 
Um, we, our gut microbiome plays a huge role in that communication. And because that microbiome can affect brain health, improving our gut health can also improve mental health. Uh, prebiotics, which is a fiber that probiotics ferment and uses for fuel may also affect um, brain health. So I don't know if you guys have ever, uh, oh, why is it doing that to me? Um, Pretty good. If you guys have like ever felt like butterflies in your stomach, right? Or had like a gut wrenching experience, like because you're nervous, like, so that nervousness is like in your head, but you feel it in your gut. And that's that, that's the power of, of that connection. Um, you know, the vagus nerve is the largest nerve connecting, um, that gut and the brain and the gut is often referred to like this photo as the second brain. Um, it's, it is known as the enteric nervous system. Um, and it's two thin layers of more than a hundred million nerve cells lining the gastrointestinal tract from the esophagus to the rectum. Uh, so that's pretty powerful. That's like, that's a lot of nerve cells, right? In our, in our gut, like just proving that, you know, that is a huge connection there. Um, so one study showed how the gut and the brain are connected by studying the effects of probiotics on patients with depression and irritable bowel syndrome. They found that twice as many patients saw improvements from depression when they took a probiotic compared to a placebo. That's impressive, you guys. Um, so with the improvement of the gut came the improvement of mental well-being. Um, there's specific strains too that are more beneficial towards mental health, more beneficial towards weight loss, um, different things like that. So the one from this study was actually Bifidobacterium longum NCC uh, 3001. Um, you know, and many studies have shown that people suffering from these inflammatory diseases are more prone to depression. Um, you know, and this could be due to like this dysregulation in these pathways. Um, they're also, the gut and the brain are also connected by chemicals called neurotransmitters. Um, those control our feelings and emotion. Uh, serotonin is one that helps control our body's internal clock and contributes to feelings of happiness. Um, they're produced in the brain, but also in the gut. Um, a large proportion of serotonin is in fact produced in the gut. I think it's like 70 or 80%. Um, there's also gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA. Uh, if you've seen it in the supplement stores, it's just big letters, G-A-B-A. -A. Um, that's also produced by the gut and helps control feelings of anxiety and fear. Uh, lab mice studies have shown that certain probiotics can increase GABA production and reduce depression and anxiety-like behavior. Um, they also, the our gut microbiome, they produce chemicals that affect how our brain works. So they produce short chain fatty acids by digesting fiber, including acetate, propionate, and butyrate. Short chain, short chain fatty acids affect brain function in numerous ways, including reducing appetite. One study showed that propionate can reduce food intake and reduces the activity in the brain related to reward from high energy foods. So, I mean, you guys, this is like the gut and the brain before you hop on a pill before you do anything like this, we've got to make sure that our diets and our gut health is on point. I will stop with all the crazy science because I have more crazy statistics, but I'll, <laughs> I, don't let, I will let you talk. <laughs> Certainly, it's it's really good to hear. And it, go, it kind of goes back to the chicken or egg. It's like, do you have uh, gut health concerns that are causing your depression or does your anxiety depression cause the gut health concerns? And it probably... There is truth to both of those. Because of your anxiety and depression, your gut isn't able to pro work properly to break down foods. It's just how the nerve, the vagus nerve works together. So I believe there is a connect connection between both of them. And what Brittany mentioned about the use of probiotics is so it's basically working together with the gut. I'm sure you've also heard the story of uh, giving, uh, I believe uh, people in jail, like prisoners in jail, a basic multivitamin, multivitamin mineral actually also helped their moods. 
it's like, and this, this would, there wouldn't go into the really higher end ones like we recommend to our clients and people in the, in the group, but even a, a basic multivitamin and mineral can have a make, uh, can support overall, but overall health, mental and overall health in that perspective. And from the uh, gut brain connection too, just come back to a very basic, basic perspective. How do you feel in eating? Uh, just listen to your body and how you feel when you're eating an apple and some almond butter, or even just an apple right by yourself, versus eating, say, a bag of chips and potato chips and stuff. It's going to affect your body much differently because the apple is giving your body the nutrition and the information to support health, where the, um, the chips or you know, Ritz or whatever, it's just basically empty calories to a certain extent. So from that perspective too, it's really the simple things that, that can make a big difference. And as you said, I, I've also heard the perspective of almost two thirds or, or close to that of people who have experienced uh, depression and or anxiety like symptoms have, a, have or might have a gluten allergy. And again, a lot of a lot of our lives have have a similar theme to them the past three four weeks. As far as like, you know, it might be gluten or sugar or dairy that are causing your concern, but those all those foods we're not saying you have to cut those out, but all of those foods will have an impact on immune health and your joint health because they're causing inflammation in the body. So again, it's not like we're a gluten free group with us. We're just not, but. The inflammatory foods will make a, uh, will cause a big impact on how you feel, and just the very simple things. Like as I said, take mental note of how you feel after eating uh, certain foods. Okay, this food is making me feel really good. I'm feeling crappy. I gotta take a nap after eating these foods, and to really realize what what's gonna work best for you. As so ultimately, you know, we can give you all the all the data in the world, but your our bodies are our first and most important doctor in the room when it comes to that. That's what you get to listen listen to. In addition to you know, wellness professionals, but listen to your body and you can really notice it both from the environmental perspective in addition to the food perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Chris. And to touch on that, you know, immune health um, as well, you know, and there, there is a common theme, right? Because in everything that we've been talking about that over the last month, you know, in terms of our immune system, just our digestion, our, you know, mental health, like that all starts with what we're putting in our bodies, right? And so we want to avoid those inflammatory things that are going to cause this systemic inflammation in our bodies that, you know, end up causing our immune system to go onto overdrive. I will uh, end this slide with one more statistic because, you know, about 80% of our immune system is in the gut. So the, if the immune system is turned on for an extended period of time, which I talked about um, last week when we discussed the immune system, that leads to autoimmunity a lot of times, right? So rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, lupus, things like that. And that's all gut health related. It starts with gut health. Um, but inflammation is also linked to many brain disorders, including depression, Alzheimer's, autism, dementia, and even schizophrenia. Um, so a lot of times, you know, these uh, autistic kids, um, and we had Nikki on here, uh, the nurse coach, um, previously, you know, her son was almost like nonverbal and he had these weird outbursts and things like that until she took gluten out of his diet. And wow, what a difference that made, you know, so eliminating those inflammatory foods can make a huge difference. And, you know, I, we're both gluten-free and it's, I don't have anything against gluten. I just have something against the way we process it and, you know, what we're doing with it in this country, because I know people with celiac who travel to Italy, who can eat pasta just fine. And yet over here, we have abundance of people having issues with these foods and it's, you know, the way it's farmed, the way it's, you know, prepared the way it's harvested. I mean, they literally spray toxic chemicals on it right before it gets made into products. Um, you know, so guys are wearing that, biohazard suits, basically. Yeah, in the yeah. Fields. yeah, exactly. So I think that, you know, plays a huge role in it. I don't think it's gluten itself. I and mean, people have been eating bread for thousands of years, right? Like, but our wheat now that we have is not the same wheat that we had just even just a couple hundred years ago. 
Well, even when you or when I was in middle school in the 90s, yeah. and relatively speaking. The 90s is when everything started changing with the GMOs right. and all the yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, food allergies up, right. obesity up, autism right. up. I mean, there's a connection there. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's not causation, but it's definitely, you know, correlation for sure. Can't deny that part, definitely. Right. So foods that support mental health. So as we were just saying, we want to avoid those inflammatory foods, you guys. So things like gluten, conventional dairy, um, sugar, extremely inflammatory. Those are kind of really like the top three, but also, you know, genetically modified corn, which is in everything. Um, soy is an issue for a lot of people. Um, but, uh, you know, so we want to avoid those processings, fried foods, um, artificial flavors, sweeteners, colors, all that stuff. That stuff is super toxic for us. Read your labels, you guys. Maybe we'll do like a label reading class or something because I think that's super important for people to know is how to read labels because look at some of the stuff that we are feeding to our kids. I was actually just listening to um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Harmon, uh, Hyman's uh, podcast earlier and he had a guest on and she was talking about the glycemic index of foods and these cereals that are healthy, right? She said Cheerios, che Honey Nut Cheerios, was the second worst for blood sugar next to cinnamon toast crunch. It was like in the forties for glycemic load, like afterward, that is not healthy. You guys like, and we're like feeding this stuff to our kids. Some of these ingredients in the cereals are the same as like ingredients that are in paint thinners and things like, I mean, like these are, if these, these are not things that our bodies should be consuming. So we want to eat foods that are super healthy for not only for our gut, but for, you know, our mental health as well. So this is a great, you know, less, but real food. We want to eat real one ingredient whole foods as much as possible. It doesn't have a label on it, or maybe it's just a barcode, but not a five, you know, 30 ingredient label on it, just from broccoli or whatever, obviously from the, from the earth. Yep. Yeah. As, as an example, question for you, actually, you mentioned raw cheese. Uh, are there cheeses that are better than others as far as, you know, Parmesan versus uh, Romano and stuff? Yeah, so typically, I mean, if you have um, issues with, I mean, the, the raw cheese on here as because it has those, you know, bacteria, it has the like cultures in it, which are beneficial um, in terms of like just having issues with like dairy. So uh, dairy has its place, right? It's conventional dairy. That's the issue. Okay. It's also the same with conventional meat, right? It's the way the animals are raised, what they're given, right? So these foods, the animals are unhealthy because they're fed a very inflammatory diet, unnatural diet in of grains. And so their omega um, three to omega six ratio is very off. So they're inflamed, which any of their products that we consume causes inflammation for us, you know, as well. But in terms of like, uh, you know, so we want to go for organic if we are doing dairy in our diets and, you know, I, I do some dairy, I'm not completely dairy free, but I try to avoid it. Um, we want to go organic, you know, grass, grass fed, pasture raised, um, clean, you know, like the carry gold butter, you know, things like that. Um, and then, if you're ha so Parmesan doesn't have a lot of lactose in it. So if you have, um, if you have a lactose intolerance, the harder cheeses are easier for you. Cause really there's, there's hard, hardly any, if any at all, uh, lactose in like hard cheeses, like Parmesan. Um, but you know, really just like you said, listen to your body. If you have an issue with dairy, um, you know, don't, don't eat it. Um, you know, and, and if you are going to consume it, cause I mean, Greek yogurt is great. It has so many benefits, but make sure that you're getting high quality, that you're getting grass fed and that you're avoiding the sugar in those yogurts too, because even some of the healthy ones, like there was one that I really liked, I think it's called Walla. I don't know. Uh, had a kangaroo on the, on the label Walla, Walla yogurt. Yeah. I, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've had Greek yogurt, but one of my favorite ones is like their French vanilla, but turn it over and you look and there's like 16 grams of sugar per serving. And, you know, so that kind of defeats the whole purpose of trying to eat something healthy, right? Like, and getting those good bacteria because 
that sugar just feeds the bad bacteria. So what's the point of, you know, um, so adding things like fruit, you know, getting the unsweetened stuff. I know it can be a little more tart, um, you know, but add some fruit, add maybe just a little bit of honey, uh, you know, some, some grain-free granola, something like that to kind of sweeten it up without getting the, um, the super sugary yogurts and definitely avoid yogurts like Yoplait and stuff like that. Those are not, those are not good for you, um, at all, but, uh, you know, all of these, um, healthy fats, really important for brain health, um, you know, avocado, olive oil, coconut, coconut is very healthy for the brain. Walnut, so, walnuts, actually pretty cool. Walnuts, if you look at it, what does it look like? A brain. Yes. Yep. It's, I, uh, it's pretty cool that it's like, well, it's, this is God made it that way. God, universe, right? spirit, whatever you want to say, God made it that way. It looks like our brain yep. is going to support our brain now. So it has omega-3s omega, three, omega threes there. Yep. Also, cashews um, are really good. Almonds are really good. It looks like healthy fats, like you just mentioned. Also, has magnesium too. Magnesium is great for brain health, has calming effects. I can tell you, like, I mean, I, I love my almond butter. It's expensive, but it's really good for both perspectives from a healthy perspective, and it keeps you full. So it's, that can be helpful as well. So just, I mean, if you can, uh, some people are sensitive to nuts too, you know, like that. But other than, other than that, um, uh, omegas like, and the walnuts are amazing. Yep. I, uh, I got a funny story. So in nutrition school, uh, we used to call him the nutty professor. Uh, he was from Czechoslovakia, so he had an accent, um, and uh, he always loved wal walnuts, walnuts and berries. We should be eating walnuts and berries every day, and he was so funny because he taught some pretty intense nutrition courses, like where we were like, you know, examining the science of different nutrients, so it can be a little dry, right, and you know, like not not exactly like super exciting, fun topic. Um, but he would always like have these like food jokes, like, you know, what did the apple say to the, the orange, you know, like he always, so we called him the, the nutty professor and he had a big giant walnut poster in his, on his door, uh, for his <laughs> office. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, everybody should be eating walnuts and berries every day, every day. <laughs> Berries are good for your brain too. Blueberries, oh. it's awesome. Absolutely. All right. So supplements. I'm gonna let you start with this one. Supplements for mental sure. health. Uh, I want to start off with a little story. Oh, story time. In addition to Brittany, it tells a lot of story. Um, it was, shares great about information about studies and so forth. And I've been working in the nutrition, wellness, and supplement field for 17 plus years now. There's an amazing uh, researcher, uh, Dr. Julia Rucklich, and she's an amazing TED Talk. And it's really interesting. And it's basically um, talks about how, I think it was a group of, I don't know the ages, but a couple of younger, younger people or so, and they were, who experienced depression-like symptoms, anxiety-like like symptoms, stress, and so forth. And one group got, the, got a uh, placebo, which is normal with, with most studies, and another group got a pretty relatively higher end multivitamin and mineral complex. I don't know which one it was, was used, but she admits at the end that it was not one that you'd find in a store. It's one you'd find through a practitioner, a health coach, nutritionist, et cetera. And, and with the levels at much, uh, much higher levels of nutrients and very pure and potent. After I believe, I don't know, six to eight weeks or so, the group that were took the uh, multi, multivitamin and mineral decrease their anxiety, depression, and stress-like symptoms dramatically. And if you just look up Dr. Julia Rutledge TED, TED Talk on YouTube, or just Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever, you can certainly find that. And it stood out to me. I'm like, whoa, this, this is real. Like, this isn't just like me having a good experience with you know, products I've been taking for 17 plus years now, where I do notice a difference in my energy, clarity, focus throughout the day. Uh, sometimes more than an SSRI. I got to be careful with what I say. I'm not a doctor. I can't make any claims, but just from my personal experience when taking a very potent product. Again, I, she didn't even, it wasn't even discussed in the study, you know, what product was used, but it does show that the, the, um, how the power of you know, supplying your, our bodies with the nutrients it needs uh, at optimal levels that it can't get from food alone. Again, both from the Cellular, cellular support in addition to the emotional and overall support as well. 
as uh, Brittany share in, in this um, slide here, as we spoke about just the previous uh, slide before, magnesium, which is what, what we get from you know, almonds and nuts and other foods like that, that's gonna be really beneficial. And that's kind of one of, one of the products that I do notice a difference with. Omega-3s, which we can get from uh, fish, nuts, seeds, anything like that. L-theanine, GABA. GABA is actually what's released after yoga class, which is pretty cool. It's, you know, you take yoga classes pretty often and it's the happiness hormone nor nor neurotransmitter. St. John's works is awesome. It's similar to 5-HTP, it might have the similar properties. The interesting thing about that is it's almost like a natural form of an SSRI as in Zoloft or, or um, Prozac. So with, with St. John's where you can take it, God bless you, do it. Just you really shouldn't be taking that with an SSRI because you'll get a, a serotonin like through the roof and your body won't know how to handle it. It, will, it might not work out well for you. So I wouldn't recommend that if you are currently taking an SSRI, <coughs> SSRI such as Zoloft or, or, um, or Prozac. Adaptogens as, as well, uh, such as uh, ashwagandha, lemon balm, uh, lemon balm, saffron, and so forth, products like that. Those are also going to have the, the space with the same similar happiness feelings to what you would do to what you would get when you take a yoga class. And I'm not saying, which yoga is amazing for many perspectives from the mind body perspective, uh, from the emotional perspective, and in addition to the community perspective. I was listening to, you know, Joe Rogan all the time. And one of the things he talks about is yoga studios and yoga classes are so power positive. It's one of the most welcoming and positive experiences. Everyone's like, oh yeah, so good to see you. And you walk out there with a nice natural high. And that's, um, and again, it's not a drug, but that's what happens when we, with our body, it's our, the best pharmacy we have. When we tap into what's possible, again, from our neurotransmitter perspective, community perspective and you know, moving our body. Because we, emo, uh, emotion is created by emotion. So you're just laying on the couch all day, don't have much going on, and you just kind of feel down and out. But if you walk around and you move your body or do some yoga poses or, or blows and asanas, you're probably gonna get a bit of a, of a emotion boost because you're moving your body from the, from the motion perspective. So these are really important. And the vitamin, vitamin D as well, we really can't say it enough about that. We'll probably talk about that every day or so, especially over the past couple of years, where the, the minimum level to support immune health would be about 50 nanograms a milliliter. And that's what the studies are showing to ideally keep people out of the hospital. Again, if you have like 51 and you say, Chris, I'm into the hospital, can make any claims, but minimal, minimum, minimum levels like that can make a big difference. And again, in addition to higher quality and multi, multi and, and mineral minerals, there are many third party studies showing this in addition to people's experiences. Facts tell stories sell, just facts tell stories sell. So some people wanna see the hard data and the facts, other people will wanna know about their personal experience, how it helped them. And I think it was pretty cool when I saw the uh, study from, Dr. Julia Rutledge about how uh, this certain group of uh, people just know after the six to eight weeks, they're like, well, they, there's a big difference in their anxiety and, and depression symptoms just by incorporating a high quality nutritional products. And like we mentioned with the uh, prison story before, it's like just a simple, you know, multivitamin and mental that they gave the prisoners help boost their mood and their, and their health. And so it's a, it's a very quote unquote simple investment that's going to pay multiple dividends now into the future uh, with what, what we you know with your body and overall health and well-being. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, these are definitely on top of like a good, you know, multivitamin mineral. Uh, typically with my clients, I recommend a good, you know, multivitamin mineral blend, uh, antioxidant blend, vitamin D, probiotic and fish oil. Those are kind of like my main ones like as a starting point. And then depending on their situation, you know, we, we dive further into that, but, you know, like I mentioned probiotics, of course, for gut health, super important, uh, as well then for mental health, uh, we have our B vitamins. So they have a, a sedative effect on the nerves and are vital in the maintenance of our brain neurotransmitters like serotonin and adrenal function. 
Uh, folic acid B6, niacin, and B12 are intimately involved in the conversion of tryptophan into serotonin. Uh, so that is our happy neurotransmitter. Uh, low levels of B vitamins are strongly associated with depression. Uh, interestingly, stress causes B vitamins to be quickly depleted. Ah, who's stressed out these days? <laughs> um, so a good B complex formula with up to 25 milligrams of each B vitamin on top of a quality multi um, typically should be sufficient. Um, yeah, we've talked so much about uh, vitamin D, um, but it is um, low vitamin D is definitely emerging as a significant factor in mood imbalances. One study found that higher levels of vitamin D were associated with lower levels of depression, and several studies have linked vitamin D with improved mood during dark winter months. Um, magnesium, that's our calming mineral, super important, um, and most of us are deficient. Uh, mental and emotional stresses quickly deplete uh, magnesium levels, uh, as do poor eating habits, alcohol consumption, and certain prescription drugs. Uh, so it's uh, very important to make sure that we have enough magnesium as well. Omega-3s, those healthy fats, uh, great for brain health, especially DHA. So um, you know, in children, especially, I know we got some questions about kids and just even adults, right, with ADD, ADHD fish oil, DHA, that is one of the most important nutrients when, um, that, when you have that diagnosis or that, um, that concern, uh, 5-HTP that supplies, uh, the body with a form of the amino acid, uh, tryptophan and that we then, uh, convert to serotonin. So L-theanine and GABA, I mentioned GABA earlier. That's something that's made by our microbiome. Uh, you know, also it feel good, um, hormone. So we have, um, passion flower, uh, on here. So that has been used as a folk remedy to treat hysteria or anxiety, right? They used to call it hysteria. Um, now we're just like, Oh, we're just all anxious. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And insomnia. So this one's really good. So if you have anxiety and you're unable to sleep, passion flower is, um, very good for that. Um, the flower essences, uh, I've done a post in here before about the Bach flower remedies. And I know that Bach flowers is a member in the group, uh, as well, which is really cool because I love, uh, the Bach flower remedies. I love all their stuff. The rescue remedy is great. I use the rescue remedy on my pets. Um, but it, you know, just their, their flower essences. So, uh, they're said to work on a subtle energetic level, but with profound results. One study, including moderately anxious subjects who reported personality traits as anxious, impatient, irritable, nervous, and tense, found a 100% reduction in anxiety levels after treatment with a blend of uh, impatience, cherry plum, white chestnut, and beech flower essences. 80% of the subjects taking flower essences reported that even when confronted with stressful events, they were able to stay calm. That's way better than any prescription drug I've ever heard of. Um, these are great. The flower essences are amazing. Uh, St. John's wort is another good one. Um, you know, it has a long history of being, uh, use with depression in a meta analysis of 23 well done studies. Um, it summarizes an overall improvement in the symptoms of mild to moderate depression. Also, the effects have been found to be similar to those of, of antidepressant medications, but with fewer side effects. Um, consider 300 milligrams three times a day, the dose used in over 35 successful studies. Uh, it should be taken for four to six weeks before judging its effectiveness. Um, but, um, it can make the skin more sensitive to sunlight. Um, and then also be careful because it is contraindicated with certain medications. So just if you do decide, um, to start incorporating St. John's wort, um, and you're on prescription medications, make sure you have that discussion with your doctor. Um, and then adaptogens. Yeah. So like ashwagandha, ginseng, rhodiola, uh, eleuthero and shisandra all can help, uh, benefit mental health as well. Absolutely. Take it away, Chris. I know you like this one with exercise. <laughs> there we go, of course. And again, it actually goes back to what I was saying earlier with regard to um, emotions are created by motion. The simple things of uh, you know, moving your body around, 
it could be putting some music on. Of course, surprise, surprise, you hear that from me, but yeah, I put some music on. So it kind of uh, gets your, your body moving and so forth can make a, a big difference in how you feel. Just moving your body, do simple things. Of course, if you are feeling down and anxious, it can be hard to go from like step zero to like three, but just do your best. Do your best to get off the couch, get out of bed, whatever situation might be, and just do moving around a little bit. Of course, you know, if you are sick or whatever the situation is, rest up, let your body do what it needs to do. But for overall health, exercise and, and movement can uh, make a big difference. I, I think I put a post up in the group of you know, the benefits of walk around in nature. And it is a winter now, so it's like, you know, I, actually, I was spoken, speaking, uh, speaking to a woman from Alaska this morning, it's all Brittany, it was like negative, negative 27, but do what you can. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm not going out in that. <laughs> not, not gonna happen. So unless you like do not, we're like you know stuck in the frozen tundra, and that's literally literally frozen tundra. But there are ways to hopefully move your body around, take walks outside if possible, put on a yoga DVD, a yoga YouTube video, whatever it might be to to move your body around. And as we get closer into the spring and warmer months as well, that's really where it's gonna be even more you know, beneficial and you know, more tempting to go and spend time outside because we're gonna get the extra mood boost from being in the sun. It's, I remember, I can even like think about the spring days, it's like, whoa, the grass is growing. The, you can smell the grow, the grow of the grass. The sun is out. It's just such an amazing feeling. And that's similar to the effect you can get with vitamin D as far as the, the mood effect. Uh, but exercise and mental health, as you can see here in the, in the, in the screen, can make a big difference. And just the simple thing is like, you have a good workout, you know, this feels really freaking good. And when you work working out, unless you, know, you gotta really, really careful not to check your phone every two minutes, but when you're working out, you do get the adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush the boost of hormones and neurotransmitters to get your body move, moving. And it's a great and semi easy way to help um, remove the stress chemicals in your body, not remove them, but reduce them. Just move, moving around, working your body out, moving your muscles, uh, even just muscle health and not, not a big dude, obviously, but just exercising and lifting weights is, is important for immune health. As you get older, you're going to need, need the muscle support to just do the simple things. So moving your body to any, any perspective, start small. If you, go, you can't go from like couch to 5K within like a week or so, and not to say you have to do a 5K, but moving your body around, going a walk around the block. Okay, cool, I did that. And maybe tomorrow I'll do a walk, uh, you know, uh, two, block, two trips around the block. Maybe I'll do three and just keep your body moving. And as you keep on doing it, the best part is as you're moving around, you can be less tempted to look at the news or look at your Facebook or look at anything else, you can be more in the moment, which is where you need to be for, especially under times of stress, where it's like, oh crap, what's going on or overseas or COVID or, or whatever. So there's so many benefits to it. And again, I've spoken about this many times, but the simple things can make a big difference. You don't need to go and do a big bench press. Like, oh, I need to, it's cool, but you don't need, need to, to do that for, you know, to get a mental health boost, just small and in in incremental uh, movements of energy can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. It, like I said before, yoga is amazing. Uh, and I, don't, I don't own a yoga studio that you have to go to, but yoga is great from the community perspective in addition to the overall mental health perspective as well when you're, when you're increasing serotonin levels, GABA levels and so forth. It's an amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and just moving your body is super important for just, you know, physical health and emotional health, mental health. Uh, new research shows that not only does regular physical activity benefit mental health, but it can also be used to treat chronic mental illness. Um, it is now known that exercise reduces the likelihood of developing depression as well as maintains mental health as we get older. In terms of treatment, exercise appears to be as effective as pharmacological interventions across a range of conditions, including anxiety, mild to moderate depression, ADHD, dementia, and even reduces cognitive issues in those suffering from schizophrenia. So, um, you know, many of us have heard, 
you know, the benefits of exercising, right? Weight loss, lower blood pressure, reduced risk of diabetes and other chronic conditions, increased energy levels, but we don't hear enough about the psychological benefits of exercise. Um, and there's definitely no shortage of benefits from easing symptoms of anxiety and depression to improving memory. Exercise is definitely good for our minds, but how does it do this? How does that work? Because, you know, my geeky, nerdy science <laughs> self wants to know why and how. So it is because exercise directly affects the brain. It promotes many changes in the brain, including new neural growth, reduced inflammation, and new activity patterns that promote a sense of calm and well-being. Exercise releases endorphins in your brain that help energize you and make you feel good. It also serves as a distraction to break the cycle of negative or overwhelming thoughts that can feed anxiety and depression. Exercise is great, you guys. Then we have other lifestyle factors that support mental health. There are numerous ones, meditation, prayer, yoga, mindful breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, time in nature, like Chris mentioned, uh, digital detox, let's get off the social media sometimes, relationships, gratitude, sleep, um, getting rid of like negative people and situations and things like that in your life is super important for mental health. Let me tell you, it's been over a year now since I've watched the news, probably the best thing I've done for my mental health ever. Um, you know, and, and just along with diet and exercise and, and these things, these, these lifestyle factors, um, can be so important, but it's really important to not surround yourself with toxic people, with toxic environments, because that will just drag you write down. And I know that, you know, many of us have friends, family that they're just, eh, you know, like those type of people cut the cord, you know, and don't feel bad about it. It's for your mental health. Um, you know, and that is more important than, than anything, you know, than, than a cousin or, you know, even a parent, um, you know, if they are not good for your mental health, take a step back, put some space in between there. And if they don't, you know, maybe communicate, if they don't want to change though, then, you know, it's for your own health. Cause I see that all the time in some of my other groups, like family members, people fighting, um, things like that. If it, if it's not benefiting you mentally, physically, spiritually, then it's, it's gotta go. I've spoken about before too, and this, uh, relates when you not only listen to your body when you eat certain foods, okay, I have a nice, you know, a salad with some chicken or some fish is satiating, has some good nutrients and so forth. I feel good afterwards. Cool. We know that we know that's pretty uh, scientific from a most uh, scientific as well. But then if you're eating at a table with family members or, you know, people that stress you out, listen to your body. Uh, you're not going to digest the food you're going to be tensed up so like again you're even if like you eat the healthiest foods in the world but your environment sucks and you're around people that don't support you or that you're not comfortable with the foods can do will help you a little bit but because your body is so tense and nervous it's not going to do what it was in intended to do as far as giving your body the nutrients and the information basically like data information to your to your cells that it needs so in, in even like you like you're just saying, if you think about someone, a family member, a boss, it could even be a boss, but you can't really run away from them, run away from them that easily. But if you think about them and they just like causes your body to, to tense up, as Brittany was saying, it's probably best for you to like maintain your space in whatever capacity you can, whether you live with them or you know where the situation is, but do your best to stay away from them and create more of a positive, positive input, whether it's on podcasts or people like us, communities like us as well. So ju just as much as we need to listen, listen to our bodies with the food, listen to our bodies when we're on certain people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just want to talk about a couple more um, things on this. So if you guys, you know, there, there's absolutely a place for medication if necessary, you know, different forms of anxiety and depression. I mean, it's a wide spectrum, right? You guys, um, I used to be on medications and I will tell you the lifestyle changes I made um, were enough to get me off of those medications. But I also did a lot of 
work, right? Like, so, you know, working with, I've done a lot of energy healing. We have a wonderful uh, Theta healer in the group um, that I worked with um, and let go of a lot of things that I had been holding on to from past traumas. Um, you know, we have biofeedback in here. We have shaman and Reiki um, and things like that, alternative uh, holistic methods to, you know, treating these um, issues in addition to diet. I mean, diet, exercise, these lifestyle factors, these are the foundations, but obviously there's, you know, some things that, that people, you know, some real trauma that people have suffered that's going to require some more work. But I do want to say that if you are on medication right now and your doctor has not talked to you about these lifestyle factors and diet, like let's, let's get that under control too. In addition with your medications that you're on, let's do those and see the improvements that, that can be made just through that diet and lifestyle factors. And then if there's some, you know, there, there's therapy, you know, there's, there's alternative energy healing as well. But, you know, some of us, some people may need those medications. So there is a time and a place for that. So don't feel like we're saying, you know, like, you know, don't, don't do that. But if you're not focusing on, if, especially if your doctor is not asking you about these things first, these lifestyle factors, because the studies are there, you guys, the studies are there. These lifestyle factors make a huge difference in mental health. So if they're not talking to you about those things. You need a new doctor. Um, because these things are the foundations, right? And then if still needed, then medication has its place, um, you know, but let's try the natural things first because these medications have serious side effects. They're addicting, they have long-term consequences and they affect our bodies in different ways. So if so we can avoid them, yeah. They're hard to come off of. It's like, yeah. once you're on them, it's going to take a while to get off. And I you may know uh, from that perspective as well, but it's not easy to, and it's not recommended to, unless under you know, some pretty strict guidance because coming off of an SSRI yeah. can do have wicked effects on the brain. So yeah. like we, we cannot make any diagnoses yeah. or like, anything like that, like, like that there. It is a process to do uh, right. because it's like our bodies are so used to getting that serotonin every day you take that away from the body, you're going to go to, it the can lead slide. to some real lows for sure. Wicked slide. So be careful with that. And again, we can't make any uh, claims, obviously, either, either way, but it's because be, that's something that needs to be done with supervision. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, um, if, if you're feeling anxious, depressed, especially after these last two years, you're wondering, you know, should I get on a medication and you haven't yet? Let's, focus on these lifestyle factors first and see what a difference that can make, um, you guys, because I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Um, you know, and then just doing the work, doing the, you know, like, like I said, I've, I've done a lot of the trauma work and I've gotten, and it's uncomfortable. It's not fun. Right. I'd rather just take a pill and make it all go away, but that's just a band aid. That's not dealing with why I was having the anxiety and the depression in the first place. I had to go and I had to deal with the trauma that I experienced. And it's, it's not a fun experience, but it's healing and it helps you grow and it helps you overcome a lot of those things. Right. So, you know, very important. If you guys need help with anything, if you guys are struggling with your mental health, seriously, like we have resources, you guys, please reach out to us. Know that you are not alone. Post in the group, ask for help. Um, nobody is alone here. We want to support you. We want you to feel loved. We want you to know that you're loved and that you were cared about and that, you know, this, this too shall pass. This will pass. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Just want to share one other thing too with what we've experienced in the past couple of years. There isn't one thing or another that'll cause a mental health quote unquote crisis or you no know, anxiety or depression. It could be your relationships with your family relationships, or it could be your, you're not satisfied in your career and you're realizing like this isn't this is, the money's great, this money's cool, but like it's not satisfying. So, like, part of a whole, we're a whole person, we're not just you know, some you know, kale and broccoli now and you're good to go so there comes a point where if you're not satisfied in that career and you're realizing that you know that career might not be there tomorrow or next week because if there's a, another shutdown or the hell might happen I'm gonna say that 
um, there, there's multiple aspects to it. So it could be career, it could be relational, it could be the, we're connecting with one another. So if, as an uh, so, uh, integrative health coach, I also work with people and like, okay, not just like giving people some you know, recipes and send them on their way, but like, okay, what's going on here? Everything else is, is pretty much working well, it's firing on all cylinders, but you, your body's not digesting the nutrients because you're stressed out at work. You're not completely happy and satisfied uh, emotionally. And we realize that, okay, life is precious. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or next week. So is there a way for you to create a passion project? It could be working online with other people. It could be painting, it could be writing a book that's gonna more light your inner fire, your emotional fire, in addition to just getting paid. So there's that as well, in addition to all of our work experience. Yeah. Satisfaction in your career and everything else is really important, especially if it's bringing you down. It's, we're not made to just go <laughs> be alarmed by an alarm clock in the morning and then say at a certain hours that there are other things you can do to integrate into your, integrate into your life. It's very possible. Awesome. I just was able to click since I left my full screen here. We got some uh, comments uh, below. Uh, Rebecca, so good, you guys. This is my specialization. I love this topic so much. You guys are killing it. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, yeah, I know that you are a great resource um, for this. Uh, if you guys um, want to check out more about Rebecca's coaching, uh, let us know. We did an interview with her back in um, December. So if you want to check that out, let me know and I'll make sure you get that. And then Caitlin Bradley, thanks for sharing. This is very helpful. I'm so glad uh, that this was was helpful, Caitlin. Um, and let us know below, guys, like what other topics do you guys want to learn about? Um, you know, we want to, we want to teach what's going to be the most helpful for you guys. We've just kind of been going off of based on like the questions in the group so far and kind of what most people are struggling with. And a lot of it's digestion, immune and mental health. <laughs> you know, so it, it all comes back to the gut. That's why I'm a gut health coach because it's all, it all starts with the gut so far, but whatever you guys want to learn about, you guys want to do like a meal planning uh class you guys want to talk about reading labels like let us know what you guys want so that we can um bring you what is going to be most valuable and serve you the most um where you're at okay certainly thank you so much awesome Brittany. good job great job yeah you as well chris thank you guys so much have a great rest of your week and uh we will talk soon oh uh we have an awesome um thing on Friday, I will be interviewing uh, Bridge Achoa for, um, she is an Ayurvedic practitioner. She has a really cool uh, couples uh, kind of cleanse thing going on for Valentine's Day. So if you guys want to uh, learn about that, that will be this Friday at 3 p.m. for all the practitioners uh, that uh, commented on my post about a platform where they could uh, be hosted on for other people to find them. We're working out the details on that now. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and just check our events, you guys, because we're going to keep doing this. Like this is, we're, we're, we're gaining momentum in this group. We're really like looking to find people that can help everyone. And, um, so always just make sure you check out our events page. Um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep bringing you some awesome content. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Bye guys.